Welcome, friends, to the animation experience at Conservation Station. Since the 1930s, Disney animators have put their pencils to paper in service of the idea that the greatest inspiration often comes from the magic of nature. Walt Disney himself understood the importance of spending time around animals, studying their behavior and personalities in order to create realistic characters and dynamic storylines. This meeting of the human and animal worlds sparked a legacy of storytelling that has shaped our relationship with animals and conservation forever. Today, we invite you to become a part of that legacy as our own Disney artists help you learn to sketch characters inspired by the very animals found here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Get your pencils ready, because here comes our animation artist now. Well, good afternoon, everybody. How's everyone doing today? You're going to have fun, right? Yep. Fantastic. Uh, now, normally, I would tell you about how Walt used to bring animals into the studio so his, uh, his artists could look at them and kind of figure out how they worked. Um, but we're drawing kind of a fantasy character. Based, uh, based on a pill bug, a pug, a penguin. Not a penguin, a penguin. But I'll tell you what we're gonna do. How about we get someone who's a little higher than I am to tell you a little bit about it. What do you think? Let's take a look at one of our head animators as she tells you what this is all about. Look at the screens. Hi everyone, and welcome to the animation experience at Conservation Station. I'm Amy Smead. I'm one of the heads of animation for Disney Animation's latest feature film, Raya and the Last Dragon. The incredible team of animators, artists, and technologists working on this film at Walt Disney Animation Studios spent nearly three years creating the world of Kumandra, which is filled with unique and fantastical characters. And while many of these elements seen on screen came from our research of Southeast Asia and the filmmaking team's imaginations. Some, including our characters of Tuk Tuk or our trio of Anglis, were inspired by real animals in nature, continuing the legacy Walt Disney started with Bambi. As you know, Disney's legacy is unmatched, but especially when it comes to one thing. Adorable sidekicks. There's Flounder, <laughs> Edwardy, Pascal, oh, and Pooh, Jacques, and Gus Gus. There's no thing that makes me angry. <laughs> yeah. Well, and today, we have the honor of announcing a brand new addition to the lineup. And his name is Baby Tuk Tuk. Oh, oh man, so, so cute! cute. Oh, I'm sure. oh. 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 Sorry, why didn't I get one of those? Um, I'm like a big Baby Tuk Tuk fan. Um, I'll share with you, though. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. You can find elements of Raya's faithful companion, Tuk Tuk, or the fearless Angis in our own world. For example, animators drew inspiration for Tuk Tuk by combining the animal adaptations of pill bugs, pugs, and pangolins. And what about those Angis? See any familiar animals in their character design? How about a monkey with a wisp of catfish thrown in? Perhaps your animator can help you find these unique characteristics as you begin your drawing today. Thanks to technology, we're now able to bring these characters to life digitally, but we start with these initial character designs to help us define their shapes, their personalities, and their movements. From the designs to how we model, rig, and animate these characters, we also incorporate our research from real-life animals that inspired us along the way. Have fun, and be sure to check out more characters by watching Raya and the Last Dragon. And today we are going to be among the first to draw Tuk Tuk. Now everybody wonders, where did he get the name Tuk Tuk? Tuk Tuk is a uh, motorized rickshaw from Thailand. So it kind of fits, really. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with the eyes. Now the eyes are actually, they're circles, I'm sorry. I mean, we did draw the big circle for you. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to take my pencil and kind of measure between these two lines of the circle. I'm going to go in about that far. Make a little mark in there. And that's where I'm going to put my circle. I'm going to put the circle just inside these lines. Something that's circular. Something that I can live with. Or not live with. Either way. 
just gotta keep going. It's okay to feel it out for a while. Eventually you're gonna have to put your pencil down. Put some nice smooth lines in there. And this is baby Tup Tup, so we are making some big eyes on it. You want it to be cute. Now, believe it or not, that same distance, about the same distance from that midline out to here, but it's gonna be a little, a little bit bigger. So we're gonna do that, that nice little backward C here. Get us started. Bring it around. Kind of get an idea where we want to go. And then kind of just trace over our lines of light. You can make them darker as you go later on. You don't have to do them right now. We do make light lines to begin with. Why? Because there's no erasers. All right, so we got these two kind of uneven uh, eyes, but that's because he's kind of turned away from us. And we're gonna make some big circles on the inside too. It's gonna take up most of the real estate here. Most of gonna be closer to this side, to the left, than to the right. Why? Because we're gonna be looking at this. So we have a nice big circle on the inside too. I'm gonna to leave that little area right there. I'm make a little pat in it. Give a little pie eye, is what we used to do, what they call it. It looks like a slice of pie. A little happy. All of us 80s kids. Not many of us. Okay. And if you want to, you can shave that in. Except for the pie slice, because that's going to be the little glint in his eye. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side, so this one's going to be right up against our eye. It's going to be a little bit more real estate on the other side. Try and get somewhat of a circular motion. A little pie eye in so I can finish this out. Shave it in. It's not really important to shave it in. I'm just giving you some time to catch up a little bit because the circles are not the easiest thing to do, even with a compass. While I'm doing that, I'm going to thicken up the top just a little bit. Just make it look like he has some eyelids there. Because I think it looks cute. The whole thing. We just want to kind of look cute. Everybody knows what a pill bug is, I'm sure. You might call, you might call it a roly poly, though. Did you know, though, it's not a bug? It's not. A, it's a crustacean. It's an isopod. Believe it or not, they still have gills. That's why they're always in damp places. All right, so we got our eyes in there. We're gonna go ahead and put a nose in. That's gonna be kind of a diamond shape, really rounded diamond shape. So I'm gonna start up here, just a little bit up here, and I'm gonna go right here and make a nice little flat diamond. Round. Just a little point. Round it out a little bit. And I want that diamond shape, because what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna kind of make an elephant here. What do I mean by that? When I make the nostrils, I have them come around, just come up, and that's the elephant ears. And then I can just close that at the bottom, pretend like he doesn't have his trunk up. Now, why, what about all this over here? I'm going to put some wrinkles in his nose. He's got um, armor all over him, plates. Well, even his nose has kind of plates. But it's a cute little thing. Once I have that, I'm going to come to the edge of his eye, right across from my nose, the bottom of my nose right there. I'm going to put a little dimple right there. Let's put a smile on his face. That smile is going to go right underneath his nose. But it's going to have a little bit of a wave to it. So come down, back up, back down, and it's going to curl just inside this eye. A little curl there at the end. How's everybody doing? So far, so good? It's about one head shake. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go ahead and put a smile on his face. What I'm gonna do from here, I'm gonna put a little S curve in. Put a slight S curve, come back up to the other side. And 
And then I want to put a nice cute little tooth in here. A nice little curvy tooth there. Right on that midline, I'm going to go ahead and make it two teeth. And then put a little tongue in there. Kind of come at top to the top of this tooth and down. A nice little line. Everything else behind you, color it in. Okay, we got a little happy face that we don't have. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with uh, very lightly putting on his face. We're going to go ahead and come over here to the side of his eye. We're going to come about halfway between this line and this line. And I'm going to make a nice little curve. Very lightly through. Coming back down just very close to his eye on that side. The reason I'm, I'm doing that lightly is I'm going to put some other stuff in there. So you don't want to have it too dark. What I want to put in there is I want to put in his uh, antenna. And that's just going to be right here. I'm going to put a big oval. Big egg shape right there next to our guideline. Just on the edge of the eye on this side, I'm going to do the same thing. Egg shape over here. But I want to connect it, so I'm going to go ahead and put a curve right underneath it. Everything on that now, you can just go ahead and make it nice and dark. Except for what's behind me. But we're not done with that yet. Because we're going to go ahead and put some eyebrows on it, because, you know, pugs are all known for their eyebrows, right? So we're going to go ahead and just kind of put Nice little well, eyebrow shape, I guess, would be. All the way to the end of the eye, bring it around. Don't worry if it's not on the okay. One on that side, one on this side, I'm gonna go up a little over just a little bit. Come almost out to that, eye, uh, that antenna. Come back. What am I gonna do about this right here? Lower that in. Who needs erasers? Okay. Now we're gonna do the rest of his uh, the rest of his face here. First, we'll put a little chin right here, and just under that chin, we'll draw a little smiley face, very lightly. I'm gonna bring it out to the end of his smile on that side. And I'm going to put a little cheek into him. And come back and meet that eyebrow there. We'll do the same thing on this side. Remember, we're doing this very lightly. And we'll put some other stuff here. This one, you don't even have to put it in again after you turn that corner. But that's pretty much the shape of his face. The reason we're going to, we're going to go ahead and put his, um, his arm both of his arms in. This one's going to be easy. We're going to go ahead and finish this by putting a little bit of fur on the end. And then just tracing over this because this is going to be in front of his arm. I'm going to go to the midline on that one. Over on this one, make a little oval. Another oval. And yet another oval. Now I'm going to show you where those are going, okay? I'm going to put one right here across his face, one down to this line, and one up to this line. It will make sense. From this one oval, I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to do this dark. I'm going to do this light. Though. Come down, and then I'm going to pull up just a little bit and stop. Two little hills. Then I'm going to put a little claw right here. A little D. Well, capital D. Finish it off. A little line right there. And do another one. Come around. Do another little D. Don't want to make it too sharp. Another one right there. One last time, I'm going to do that. Let's do that D right here. 
around. Make a little claw. Now, if you need to, you can go ahead and make circles. Just overlap the circles. But I already put so many ovals there, I didn't want to confuse you too much. Because right here is where his toes are going to be. Nice circle there. Overlapping circle there. Overlapping circle there. You don't have to do that. I'm just showing you where they're going to go. You can already see the foot kind of forming there. And I'm going to start from this little pinky toe. Come up, come around. You don't have to worry about a claw yet. We're just going to kind of put like a weird question mark going backwards. Another little backward C coming in. And one last toe coming in right there. You want to put a little toe bean in there. This toe bean, you're going to see the whole, all, the whole toe bean right here. And right above that, a little D. We're going to do the D over here first. And more like a, I guess that one's more like an, um, an almond. And then we're going to put a little toe bean underneath it. One last time. And a little toe bean. Now we got to make this look more like a foot. So we're going to come out, ball of his foot, come back down. Just gonna kind of come up. We got a foot. Put a little foot pad in here. This looks like a heel. We got this little shield there. We didn't touch any of this. We're just gonna take this, come around with a knee, trace over our oval. Go right underneath our foot there. And we have our leg in there. Now we can finish off our face. Just gonna come down in here. And make a little bit of hair. And then just face over to the bottom. So we got our face, we've got our arms in. We don't have, we're gonna go ahead and put his first little piece of armor. You're probably wondering why we have this little line. We're gonna come from up here, come up to that line. Bring it around, our antenna, and bring it in. That's going to be his first piece of armor. Moving our way around, we're going to go ahead and put another arm in. That's going to be a nice little oval right here. With three little beans, three little claws, right there. Come down, around. We got arm, we need one more foot. The foot is going to be over here. We need to do something first. And that means using this line way down here. We're going to put a little piece of his arm on. It's going to come out to the circle. It's going to come back up. Just inside that, or just outside that finger. Right now the foot's going to go right here. Again, one of those very confusing looking ovals sitting there. Those circles, more circles. But this is about where his foot's going to go. This guy, I'm going to shave a little bit off of that foot, I think. Bring it down into a heel. Put my D's in here. They're overlapping my circles a little bit. Trace over my circle. On this side, make it a little toe bean. Now you know why Raya rides him and doesn't draw him. Oh. But I think you're all good. You're with me so far, you're doing really good. We got our little toe beans in there, and of course, we're going to have some sort of foot pad right here.
All right, we got that part. Now let's keep going with this armor. Before we get back to this one, let's go ahead and start from this heel. We're gonna come through this line, back up to our finger here. So we're gonna do a nice little smiley face right here. Why? Because it's probably gonna be the easiest part of the armor, right? Concentrating so hard on drawing this right now, I'm forgetting to tell you anything. Okay. We all know what a pug is, right? We got that nice little, we got that nose from it. That's, that's where that's coming from. If you wondered where that was. Uh, all the armor from armadillos and, and penguins. It's kind of cool. We're going to bring this down. We're going to come down to the heel right here. We're going to do a slight little S curve down into that first line. And he needs a little bit of traction. So I'm going to go ahead and give him a couple little nubs on either side of that midline. I'm going to put another one down here before we put another section in. Those are all the ones that are going to be in the bottom. That's the easy part. So I'm going to come down from the heel here. I'm going to come around that little nub. And I'm going to bring it in following this circle and then bring it into that other piece of armor. Then we're gonna do a couple S curves. We're gonna come out here just a little bit above this line. This line right here, we're gonna come in. Do a nice little wavy line, a little S curve into that leg. Another one just above that is gonna come in and above. Then I'm going to go ahead and trace over my circle here. Trace over my circle here. Now we're going to do a little, we're going to come, going to come out from our knee here. We're going to come up and we're going to make a little, little curve into this line. Come back. And up. Nice wavy line here. A big lump right there on that line. And before we trace over our circle right above here, we're going to put in a little traction. Let's trace over the line. We have another section. Now we're going to kind of put that nice little wave like we did over here. We're going to put it right inside here. One more, right on the line above our antenna. Yeah. We don't have to worry about it. We're going to trace over. Trace over our line here. Now, when we trace over this line, we're not actually going to trace over, we're going to come down. Find our eyebrow there. Just over our eyebrow there. You can color in the toe beams. The foot pad. And then one little more thing, put a little bit of a little wavy line going down to the nose from the eyebrow. Both sides. A little bit of texture. A couple little bumps in here. Just showing a little, bit, a little, little texture in his face. And then sit back, relax, you have a chunk tub. How's everybody feel? I hope you feel pretty good. You just drew a computer animated character without the use of a computer in 20 minutes. Y'all did pretty good, especially considering who was teaching. I don't, I don't know about it. I don't know about anybody here. This is the first time I drew Chuck Tuck. Well, in front of everybody. 
So if you got something that looks cute on your page, wow, good job. But there is one more thing that we do have to add to this picture, um, and that's a name. And hopefully it's your name. My name is Tony Ross. I'm proud to be a Disney artist. If you look over to the right-hand side of our theater in those windows, you're going to see black and white pictures. Um, and you're also going to see the glare from behind it. But you're going to see the black and white pictures. Those are some of our early animators, and they are doing what you're doing. They are looking at nature, and they're literally drawing from it. Um, Got Retta Scott and Mary Blair there. Retta Scott was our first female animator. Retta Scott, uh, or, uh, sorry, Mary Blair was our first female imagineer. They are discussing an alligator for Fantasia. A little baby alligator, and they're going to make it into a ballerina. Frank and Ollie in the middle, two of the nine old men. You've got Ollie Johnson over there working on balloons. You've got Frank Thomas working on tramp. They're always known as Frank and Ollie. As a matter of fact, if you have Disney Plus, you put in Frank and Ollie, you'll see a documentary about that. Very good documentary. There's one other gentleman over there, and he's drawing on a lap board very much like the one you're drawing on. Uh, his name is Walt Disney. I don't know if you've heard of him. <laughs> so you've actually entered into the footsteps of the very founder of this company and what you're doing right now. You're not drawing from one animal. You're drawing from two, three, possibly four right now. And you're coming out with a hook up. So, be proud of what you've done. It takes 10,000 hours to put completion of something. We took 20 minutes. You have 9,999 hours and 40 more minutes before you become proficient. So, get to work. If you want to know, you guys have just entered into the legacy that is Disney Animation. I'm very proud of you. Uh, if you want to know, when did I become an honorary unpaid intern? Today is the 22nd of February in the 21st year. So two, 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 one. And it's always important to date it because then you know when you started that 10,000 hour journey. Now, in a little while, you're gonna hear a voice. It's gonna tell you goodbye <laughs> and thanks for coming. But that is not your cue to get up and leave. Because since we have to wear these fabulous fragments of fabric fastened firmly to our face, we have to do things a little bit differently. We are going to be dismissing you group by group. Good news is, the pencil is yours. The paper is yours. The only thing we want back are the clipboards. The clipboards you're going to grab by that hole. That's a handle. You can put it into those boxes just over by the exit and over on the uh, right-hand side of the doorway there. Uh, but when you hear goodbye, please remain seated with your arms and legs inside the theater. <laughs> this show has stopped and will resume motion at any time. Um, one of our cast members over there, I know Heather's over there. And, oh, my God. One of them will come up to you and say, hey, it's time to go. Go ahead and head on out. All right. Until then, please stand clear of the door for a warm on Tank and Sale at Holiday Love Square. And um, I want to thank you folks for drawing the movie, otherwise I would be drawing alone. And I hope you keep on drawing. Until next time, thank you and we'll see you real soon. Bye everybody. Thank you all for joining us in the animation experience at Conservation Station. Please gather your personal belongings before exiting and remember to take your artwork with you. We hope you enjoy the rest of your visit at Rafiki's Planet Club and the rest of your adventure here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Goodbye.